Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to start with the basics. We're going to create a simple useful program that performs a calculation. The program is going to prompt the user to enter the radius of a circle and it's going to calculate and then display the area of that circle. We're going to learn a lot in the process. So first thing we're going to do is go to the command line. Now this is the command line in Windows that normally says run terminal at the top. I'm kind of zoomed in here for the sake of the video and you'll be able to in this command line use your G++ compiler. That's important. First thing I'm going to show you is if you ever want to change to a different drive on your machine, for example if you plug in a USB drive and you want to write your code on that, or if you're accessing a network drive, the lab computers have an X drive for every user account that you can save your programs on. So for an example, if I want to switch to the D drive, I can just type D colon and it'll go to that drive on my computer. Now this assumes of course that you have a D drive and if you don't want to, if you want to write your code on the C drive, that's totally fine as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a new folder because I haven't done that on this drive for my C++ code and maybe I'll just call it CPP um, for my C++ code. And then I'm going to go into that and uh, it's a good idea to have one folder, obviously, that you put all of your uh, assignments in or, or code that you're working through. But you might have subfolders in there for the different assignments or different uh, lecture notes that you have. So I'm going to make a new folder in here, mkdir, for, a, um, for this example. So I'm just going to call it circle area. And then we can go into that folder. Now this is just creating folders on your hard drive just like you would in uh, the file explorer. So you could do it in the file explorer as well, but this is the command line way of doing it. Now in here, I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code to write our code. So I'm gonna type code and then I'm gonna give it the name of the file I want to create. And so I'm gonna call this one also circle area, but I'm gonna end it with .cpp. Again, that's very important. All your C++ code should end in .cpp. So now you can see I've got my editor open and I've got circle area where I can start typing my code. Now I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff around the edges of the screen here um, because it's pretty zoomed in for the sake of the video and I want all that space to show you guys the code. The first thing you should always do in all of your programs is write a comment that describes what the program does and put it at the very top. Comments are things that are ignored by the compiler. They're just for us people that are reading the code. And so you can start a multi-line comment with just uh, the slash star and then you'll end that comment with the opposite star slash and you can see in this example is showing up in green and then you should put a comment describing what the program does and the name of the person that created it which is yourself this program gets the rays from the user and returns the circles area and circumference Maybe I'll add apostrophe here. So that's a good comment to put at the top, just something short uh, that describes what it's doing and it has my name. Uh, also, a lot of people, including myself, like to put a row of stars down connecting the top and bottom of the comment. And some editors will actually add this for you if you start typing. It just makes it look nice. It's not required, um, but it is sharp looking. Now, the most simple program that you can possibly have in C++ would just be this, int main, open curly brackets, closing curly brackets, and then return zero. So return zero just exits the program and you will always have a return zero at the end of main. Inside these curly brackets is where we're gonna put all the code for our program. So everything that we wanna have execute is gonna happen inside of main. Later on in the class, we'll learn about how to add other functions and use them as well, but main we'll always have. So I'm gonna save it. You'll notice at the top, there's a circle that indicates that the file has not been saved. And so it's really important to always save your code before you try to compile it, otherwise you're compiling an older version of your code. So you can do that by hitting Control S in Windows or Command S in Mac OS. And I'm gonna flip back to the command line. And I'm gonna clear the screen with CLS. You can type clear if you're on a Mac. And um, here's the command, G++. I want all the warnings even the extra ones. And I wanna use the latest C++ standard. And I wanna name the output, maybe I'll call it circle. And the last thing you put is always just the input. And so that's our source code, that's the C++ file. I'm gonna hit enter. And if we don't get any output, that means it worked. So success. Now, if I type dir, you can see what's on in this folder. And you can see we now have our C++ file. And we also have our circle file. Oh, I misspelled circle there, but that's okay, it'll still work. Um, I just taped the name of the thing that I created um, 
And if I hit enter, it's going to run. And of course, the program we just created doesn't do anything. Now, I'm going to delete that because I misspelled it. I'm going to delete the executable file. Now, if you're on Mac, you won't see the .exe, and that's fine. Um, it'll just be named circle if you spelled it properly. All right, let's go back to the code. So the first thing I'm going to do, and you'll do this probably for most of your programs, is do a pound include IO stream. What this does is it gives us access to the input and output streams, allows us to get input from the user in the command line and display stuff to the screen in the command line. So obviously we'll want that. And then using namespace STD, include it for now. Once we get a little further along, you'll be able to understand what it does. Okay, in here, um, I'm gonna prompt the user to enter the radius. So uh, see out, output stuff to the screen. And then we've got two less than symbols. That's the insertion operator. We're gonna insert stuff into the output stream so that way it shows up on the screen. And here we'll just say, enter the radius of the circle. And it would be a good idea to have a comment for this line of code too. It's important to thoroughly document your code. So we're going to say uh, prompt the user for input. Now, if we run the code, I flip back um, and I compile it again. So I'm going to just clear the screen, go back up. Um, I'm just pressing the up arrow to see my old, um, old entries and we'll fix the spelling here, circle. So now it compiled, and if I type circle and hit enter, it says enter the radius. Obviously, we didn't actually get the radius from the user, so that's all it does. Now, we need a place to put this radius. We'll create a variable. Double is a type that holds floating point numbers. Floating point meaning that it can have a decimal place, and so it's not just whole numbers. And so here, we'll give it a meaningful name, radius. And we'll create a little comment here that so we're going to declare our variables there. We're prompting the user. Now we can do cn radius. This is going to read in the input that the user enters um, and store it into radius. So we have cn and then the insertion operator. That's the two greater than signs together. So after that, we can do the calculation. So we'll want to calculate the area. We'll have a comment for that. Calculate area of the circle. And we'll need a variable to store that don't need one, but it's helpful. So we'll have double area here. Again, we want to hold the decimal places, so we'll make it a double. And we can say area equals, this is pi r squared, right? For now, we're just going to put 3.14159. Now, this is not the best way to do it. We'll fix it in a minute. Uh, times, so the radius times the radius, that would be the radius squared, right? Um, now, you might be tempted to do something like this to the power of two. This actually in C++ doesn't square the number. It will do a mathematical operation, but not the one you're thinking. And so it will compile and run, but it won't give you the correct results. So that's a semantic error. Error the compiler won't be able to detect. So now let's show the radius of the circle after that. So we'll um, display the results. And I'll do another C out. Here, I'll say the area of the circle is area, end L. End L means end of line. And so we're going to put a blank line after this. We could also add, if we wanted to, um, a period here. You can see here I'm connecting all the different pieces with this insertion operator. So on, on the left and right of everything I'm outputting to, this, to the C out, um, I've got that operator. So that's really important. Then we still got our return zero, um, and return zero means exit successfully. And so that's what that's doing there. Uh, we've got a lot of our single line comments. You can see single line comments start with uh, the slash slash. Okay, that's a lot of code that we wrote without compiling, we better check to see if it works. It's always a good idea to check your code regularly to see if it works. That way, if you get an error, you know it's only within a certain range of new lines of code you added um, that helps tracking it down. Good, no errors. So now if I type circle, now you can see it waits on that same line for us to enter some input. So if we enter in one, it outputs the area of the circle is 3.14159. Now, an area, that makes sense because uh, one times one squared, or one squared is one, and then times pi would be, one times pi would be 3.14159, based as we input it. So that's great. Now, one thing we should do is you should never have in your code 
a magic number. That is some random value, not really random, right? It has some meaning, but a value that isn't um, actually defined to have any legitimate meaning outside of itself. Now we all know what pi is, um, so we can just see that, but most of the time a user might not know what you're talking about when they're reading the code, uh, another programmer. And so it's a good idea to create a constant for any magic values that you have, such as this one. So what we're gonna do, instead of putting that there, we're going to create a constant up here and we just put the word const in front um, of any type. So we want a double still, but it's gonna be a constant double and we'll name our constants in all caps. So we'll say const pi equals that. And then down here where we were using it, we'll put our new constant. So that's a little more readable. Um, so that's just good practice. That's a good way to set up your code. Uh, if you've got some magic value uh, like pi or like seven for the days of the week, uh, for example, you will want to make a constant out of it. Okay, let's go back to our code and make sure that still works. I'm just going to try a few different values here. So two squared is four and four times pi would be that. That looks good. Uh, let's try zero. Zero, that makes sense. No radius, no area. Let's try a negative number. Now, obviously you can't have a negative radius, but a user might type one in. So one squared would be one. And so it gives us the output as if the radius is pointing in the opposite direction. So that seems reasonable to me. What I'm gonna do now is just show you a few errors you might have run into when you were typing the code. First of all, you might have put an endel here. This is not really an error, but uh, a very common thing. Uh, so if you put an endel here after all your cout statements, then you'll get a new line after each cout statement. And uh, what that means is the user will start typing below the line instead of next to it. Um, so if I flip back to my code, I compile it again, and then I run it. You can see now I'm typing down here instead of next to it. So that's just not as nice looking. Uh, not really an error, but not really that great of a, a thing. Also, I entered a number so big, we ended up showing scientific notation. So you can see here what this is, is 1.73 so forth times 10 to the seventh. That's the output there because I entered such a huge radius. Okay, um, so don't do that. Don't put endels next to your prompts. Another thing that uh, you might try is putting something out of order. So we might try to use the radius, for example, before we got the radius from the user. So if I take this line of code and I put it up higher here, then we're actually using a radius before we got it from the user. Um, so that won't work. I'm gonna just clear the screen now. Got a lot on there. And I try to compile it. You'll see we don't get an error, but we get a warning. So the code compiled, but it says radius is used uninitialized, which means it has no initial value. So now if we tried to run the code, uh, if I can spell circle correctly, um, and we put in a number here like two, uh, you'll notice we didn't get the correct results. And so that's, uh, that's because that warning indicates that we're doing the calculations out of order. Everything in our code happens in order. Another thing I want to point out is the reason we got this warning is because we use the dash w extra parameter. So if I didn't do that and I compiled the code, you see, we don't get that output. Uh, you would not know what, why your program is not producing the correct results. And so it's always a good idea to compile with the dash W extra to get um, this important, useful information for fixing your code. All right, so things will happen in order from top to bottom. So you can see here, we've declared our variables and then we're gonna calculate our area here using the radius, but we haven't gotten the radius yet from the user. So before we do this calculation, we need to um, get the radius from the user. Oftentimes in these early projects, at least, you'll always get some input, do some calculations and then output the results. That'll be kind of our pattern here. Okay, now another common error is forgetting a semicolon. So for example, if I forget the semicolon here at the end of this line, every statement should end in a semicolon and I clear the screen and I compile. The error here says uh, expected semicolon before area and it says line 23. Um, so this one doesn't give the exact line number where we want to fix the problem um, because line 23 is down here. But you'll notice it says before area. So it means right before area, right before line 23. Well, the previous line of code um, is line 20. So that's where the semicolon goes. That's where it's expecting it to be. So if I save that and I go back, compile it, um, the error goes away.
Now, another very common error um, that uh, may freak you out when you first see it is uh, switching the directions of these. So remember, um, whatever you put here goes out to C out. So that's why the arrows are pointing towards C out. And whatever you have C in goes into radius. So that's why the arrows are pointing towards the radius in this example. So that's how you can think of which way these um, operators should go. So that you can note that the text is going out to the screen. And then this way you can see the uh, whatever the user types is going into radius. Anyways, if we get that wrong, for example, if I put it this way, we'll get a very long series of error messages. So if I try to compile it now, you can see we got quite a bit of errors there and uh, quite a long message. And so you might think, oh my goodness, what could possibly be wrong with my code? Well, we know it's a very simple fix, just the, the wrong operator, right? The wrong direction of those uh, symbols, those uh, extraction symbols there if we scroll all the way to the top and that's important always go to the very top the very first error first because a lot of times the compiler will get confused after several errors and so what we what we see here at the very top is no matching operator uh, greater than greater than and it points to the correct line of code with an arrow to that problem here's just another helpful hint i'm going to um, clear the screen if you get a really long error message like that, you can always add one more parameter to your output and it's dash F max errors equals one. What this does is it says, I only want to see one error maximum. You can change the number. You could say, I want to see three errors, but one error in this case, it will be fine for us. And so if I do this and I run the code, you can see we still get a lot, but we get a little bit of a shorter message. So bear that in mind. That's what we're looking at here. All right, let's fix that error here change this code back to less than save it and uh, we'll clear the screen again we can go up and recompile and sure enough no errors test it to see if there's any logic errors any semantic errors because we know the compiler checks the syntax errors if i try four a radius of four the area is 50. now at the top of my code i put a little comment that said that it would also calculate the circumference. So I recommend trying that out. See if you can add to this code um, a calculation for the circumference, just as practice. So you can see here we're calculating the area. Maybe we want another variable here to calculate the circumference. And then down here, you can display that uh, result from the circumference variable. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know as always, if you have any questions.